Hello, I am Dr. Vimy Vindra. I am a gynecologist and laparoscopic surgeon at Apollo Hospitals, Hyderabad. So today we will be talking about painful periods. What do you think? Is painful periods normal? As a gynecologist, I must tell you that pain during periods may not be normal and it should be paid full attention. So if you have painful periods and you are not able to do your routine activities, you are missing your school, you are missing your college, you are missing your work, you definitely need to see a gynecologist. There are two types of painful periods, one is primary dysmenorrhea and one is secondary dysmenorrhea. Primary dysmenorrhea when there is no cause and it can be managed by simple analgesics, in those cases I can say that mild pain is okay. But secondary dysmenorrhea there are various causes which can cause you painful periods and the disease may progress to an irreversible stage as well. So the most common causes of painful periods are endometriosis, pelvic inflammatory disease, fibroids, hydrosalpings and ovarian cyst and many other pelvic disorders. Today we are here to discuss about endometriosis because 1 in 10 women suffers from endometriosis and that is a huge percentage. Many girls cannot go to school because of this pain. The first 2-3 days of the periods are like hell for them. They cannot get up from the bed, they cannot do anything, they cannot concentrate, they cannot play. Office going women cannot do their work and this may be because of endometriosis. Again and again I am saying painful periods are not normal. You must visit a gynecologist to find out if you have endometriosis or not. So what is endometriosis? Endometriosis is actually an implantation of the inner lining of uterus outside the uterus or sometimes inside the uterus as well that is called as adenomyosis and when it is implanted outside it is called as endometriosis. So what are the mechanisms which lead to this disorder? When you bleed this ectopic endometrium also bleeds. Over a period of time, you either form an ovarian cyst or you form uh, endometriotic spots throughout the pelvis. This also leads to a very big problem called as infertility or inability to conceive because it damages your ovaries, it damages your tubes. So most of the time in our OPD, uh, when a patient comes to us, she comes when she starts trying for pregnancy and she is unable to conceive. And then we find out that this is endometriosis and on probing and probing and we get to know that she had painful periods and she never went to the doctor. So for, for last 20 years when she was bleeding this endometriosis was growing and progressing throughout the ovaries, uterus and all the pelvic organs. So this causes infertility but pain is more debilitating in endometriosis, it disturbs your routine life. It invades the tissues, it invades the relationships as well. Because not only painful periods, it causes pain during intercourse, it causes pain when a woman passes motion, it causes pain when she's sitting as well. So this has to be addressed and this has to be looked into and diagnosed at the earlier stage so that we can start her on a suppressive therapy. So what are the ways we can diagnose? One is the clinical history. Second is by a simple ultrasound we can identify endometriotic spots and a high resolution ultrasound does help us or in many cases we may need higher imaging such as MRI. But if you ask me laparoscopic is the diagnostic test, we do laparoscopy not only to diagnose but also to treat endometriosis and we excise all the endometriotic tissue which is present in the pelvis. That is called as excision surgery for endometriosis. Medical therapy is also available for endometriosis but not that helpful because those endometriotic scars which are already developed will not go away with the medication. We can only suppress the disease. So best and ideal treatment for pain in endometriosis is excision of the endometriosis followed by suppressive hormonal therapy or if a woman is trying to conceive then she should go for pregnancy 
as early as possible after the surgery. Also, it is more uh, important that you should know that what uh, you should ask your doctor. If you are planning to go for an endometriotic surgery and you are looking for pregnancy, they should also check for the ovarian reserve and before and after the surgery. Also, you should ask your doctor what is excision surgery and will they be doing your excision surgery or not. Because until unless we remove the existing endometriosis, you may not get complete relief. Now there is another concern whether this endometriosis comes back or not. Yes, it does come back. There are two ways it comes back. One is incomplete removal of endometriosis and second is new endometriosis formation or de novo endometriosis. So those who are having endometriosis, they are genetically or inherently at risk for getting endometriosis. So if you have undergone a surgery, there is a risk that this disease may recur. That is the reason I am stressing that a suppressive therapy has to be given after the surgery if you are not trying for pregnancy. The recurrence rate varies uh, to the extent of surgery done and also to the extent of your symptoms. But it does recur and uh, it has, but it can be controlled if we start the treatment on time. One more common term you must have heard about chocolate cyst. So what is a chocolate cyst? Is there a chocolate inside? Yes. This is an old blood collected in the ovaries which over the years it has formed. When you are bleeding outside, you are bleeding in the ovary also. So some form of endometriosis does present as a chocolate cyst and the treatment is again cystectomy or excision of the cyst. Sometimes patients do form huge, huge cysts like 10 cm, 15, 20 cm cyst with endometriosis. So painful periods are not normal. 1 in 10 women may have endometriosis. If you have pain, do visit a gynecologist, get yourself evaluated for endometriosis.